Hi everyone, my name is Steve, and for today's project, I'm going to take you through my process for creating a 3D printed tablet wall mount so I can watch uh, videos and YouTube and Netflix while I'm on the treadmill. But there's a twist. I have two tablets. There's a tablet that my wife uses. And that way she can have her headphones hooked up to this tablet. We don't have to switch the Bluetooth settings and go back and forth. And I have a tablet that I use. And so we both want to be able to use these on the treadmill, but they're both different sizes. So what I'm going to do is show you how I go about creating a wall-mounted tablet holder that will accommodate both tablets in one mount. So now that we know what we want to create, we have to go about deciding how do we want to create it. So I like to take, get all of my measurements using a set of calipers, measuring out the two tablets, getting the dimensions. But one of the other things you want to look at is parts and pieces of the tablet. On this tablet, I have a pop socket on the back. So if I'm going to create a mount, I have to work around that pop socket. You want to think about things like where are the buttons on the tablet, things that you don't want the object to be pressing against. You don't want it to be accidentally turning things on and off. So you have to consider that when you're creating your model. The next step I do is drawing. Take, uh, whether you do that, pen and paper, whether you do that on your tablet, uh, but I like to do a little bit of research online, look on Thingiverse, look on Amazon, look at products that already exist. Maybe you can get some ideas from that. As they always say, it's a good idea to steal from others and get inspiration from others. You don't have to think of everything yourself, but then you are going to want to customize it. That's the beauty of having a 3D printer. You can customize it to your device, to your specific needs. So I take, do my drawing, do all of my dimensions, get everything put together. And then the next step is to now start creating the model in your 3D modeling application. And a few things on the 3D modeling application. So I'm going to take you through what I use, but don't focus so much on the application I'm using. Focus on the objects I'm using, the basic tools that I'm using, because there's a lot of different 3D modeling software out there, uh, and you don't have to use exactly what I have. There's a few things I like to keep in mind when I'm creating an object, and especially when you're doing it on a 3D printer. So one is I always try to use primitive objects. Basic building blocks for creating just about any type of manufactured product. Now if you want to create uh, characters, if you want to create more uh, organic objects, you're going to want something more of a sculpting program than a 3D modeling, uh, 3D CAD type of a program. Number two, how do I use the minimal amount of plastic? So I try to keep the object as simplified as possible, minimum amount of plastic, that's going to be needed because that will also help reduce the time it takes to create and output it on the 3D printer. And the last thing I try to do is to minimize support material. Supports are where you have extra overhangs and things that the 3D printer, as it prints layer by layer, it won't be able to uh, print in thin air. It needs support material and that takes extra plastic and extra time. I'm using Autodesk 123D, which is no longer supported. I still have the executable files so I can keep using it because this is a program I'm very familiar with, but at some point I will end up moving to something else. As you see in this screen recording, I only use the box primitive. So I always tend to focus on functionality over creativity. In this section, I'm going to use a Boolean tool to remove a box and that will accommodate the space for the pop socket. Now 
Now I use another box and this will be for the first arm holder uh, that will hold the first tablet. And this is one of the arms and then I'm going to uh, duplicate it twice to create the other two uh, mounting points for the initial tablet. So now that I have all three mounting points, I'll use another box to simulate the first tablet. This is the smaller of the two tablets, so the larger tablet will have to go on the outside. The smaller tablet will go closest to the wall. Then I can select everything, use a Boolean tool to merge them, and then use a Boolean tool to subtract the tablet. So that will give me the dimensions that I need for the holder for the first tablet. Then I'm going to use another box tool. So as I've mentioned, I will only use the box primitive object. In this one, I'm going to create the larger tablet, position that above the first set of holders so I know where to start the second set to make them a little bit larger uh, and outside the dimensions. I can then create more boxes and this again will go through the same routine, create the boxes, position them to the tablet, use a boolean to remove the tablet for the dimensions, and create both of the arm holders uh, in the correct position. Then I need to add a little bit of extra support so that uh, things aren't too flimsy and it's not going to break off. So I add another box and for this I use the chamfer tool to create the angled edge. This will help to allow the 3D printer to uh, be able to maintain that angle. It also reduces some of the plastic by not needing as thick of a bottom uh, border uh, all the way down. And so reduces plastic, reduces print time, reduces any support materials. Then I want to take and once I have all of the angles and all of the parts, I'll use the Boolean function to combine them. Then I will use the fillet tool as to round the edges and make the overlap as small as possible. This will ensure that I don't need any support material for those overhanging arches. And with the rounded edge, that ensures the 3D printer can uh, print that without needing, uh, as mentioned, the support material. So there you have the two tablets. I show how they can slide in and out, how they both fit within one object, and there's room for the pop socket to ensure that that slides behind. So now we'll take this over to the 3D printer and let's see how it comes out. So now that the 3D print is completed, I have it mounted on the wall. You may be asking, how is it mounted on the wall? For me, I use the 3M command strips. So I have the Velcro command strips that you can take, put them on your wall, put them on the object so I can remove this. You could 
hang a picture over the top of this if you didn't just want this on your wall. Uh, you could create an intricate design around this to make it more appealing when it's on the wall. For me, I am more about form and function than I am creativity. So I am good with just having the 3D model on my wall. So I have my two tablets. So when my wife wants to use her tablet, it fits behind the object. And then when I have my tablet, which is a little bit larger, that fits right in front of it. And so technically, both tablets will fit on the mount. I would only have one of them on there at a time, depending on who is on the treadmill. But that way, it is very convenient to have one printed device to support both tablets. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you did, please leave a like as it really helps the channel. If you'd like to see more content, feel free to subscribe, hit the notifications, and I appreciate it.